Hi. Let's do one definite integ integral. Okay, d theta over 1 plus sine theta, theta from 0 to half pi. Now, I want to bring three methods here. Uh, method of one, but just uh, straightforward. This is a uh, integral i, and uh, I multiply numerator and denominator by one one minus sine theta. d theta, right? And 1 minus sine theta. Obviously, I want to change the denominator, all right? Now, when I do this, be careful that when theta is approaching to half pi, 1 minus sine theta is a 0. So we are not allowed to multiply 0, right? But, but, this is endpoint. Theta is approaching to half pi. You know, okay? the function does not necessarily be have to, not necessarily has to be defined at the endpoint. So we are take a limit. You know, we take a limit from zero to an angle. The angle is approaching to half pi. Right. This is a, this is an improper integral. Improper integral, yeah. Okay? Then this is equal to the limit phi goes to half pi and the integral from zero to half phi. This is a cosine, right? Cosine square theta. And this is one minus sine theta d theta. Okay? See, that's the reason I I must probably one minus sine theta because it, it changed to the function change change to nicer. There are two parts. This is uh, the limit phi goes to half pi from zero to phi, and the one over cosine square is a secant square, right? Secant square theta. Yes. And sine over cosine is tangent. Another cosine, one over cosine is secant. Right? So this is d theta. And uh, the integral now becomes uh, much easier. There's a limit. Limit phi goes to half phi. And this would be tangent, right? This is a tangent. This is a secant. Yeah, from 0 to pi. And then this is equal to the limit. Phi goes to half pi. This uh, tangent phi, tangent half phi, and you, if you take limit, you have a problem. So I'm um, rather combine these two together. This is a sine of a cosine, right? This is a one of a cosine. So they have a common denominator, and this is a sine minus one, right? From one to y. So this is the the limit. Phi goes to half phi, and. Uh, this will be a sine phi, right? This is zero, sorry. Minus one, and the cosine one, minus. This is zero, right? This is one, okay? Now, <laughs> Uh, the denominator goes to goes to zero. Then, sorry, the numerator goes to zero. The denominator goes to zero too. 
so we can use a Lapidas rule, right? The Lapidas rule uh, goes to half high. This is, becomes cosine. This becomes negative sine, right? This is a sine, cosine, negative sine, yeah. This is a negative one, so I made a mistake, huh? It's not zero. Yeah, sine zero minus one is a one, uh, is a negative one. And this is one, that's right. Okay, so this is a plus one. Then take the limit again. Cosine half pi is zero. This is one, so the first term is zero, so the result is one. Okay. Sorry for a little error here. So the result is one by using method one. Okay. Okay, it's, it's, it should be okay. Okay, now the second method. Method two. Method two. The integral <coughs> It's a uh, d theta, one plus sine theta from z zero to half pi. Now, second method is this: I let t is equal to tangent half theta, right? Then uh, you have a uh, sine theta is equal to. 2t, 1 plus t squared, right? Uh, d theta is equal to 2, 1 plus t squared, d theta. Now, if you forget, if you for <laughs> if you don't remember these, doesn't matter, you can easily have it from triangle, okay? This is a half theta. And the uh, half tangent half theta is t. So this is t, this is 1. And this is uh, 1 plus t squared, right? Then you want to find the sine theta is equal to twice sine half theta cosine half theta, right? So this is equal to 2. Sine is a uh, t over square root 1 plus t squared from the triangle. Multiply by cosine this angle is a 1 over that, right? Is a 1 over this. So this is equal to 2t 1 plus t squared. See? So you can have it easily, right? And you can have it easily for cosine. Now for, for the d theta, because t is tangent half theta, therefore half theta is equal to arctangent uh, t. And then take, uh, you, 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 you uh, differentiate both sides. So this is a half d theta, right? Is equal to 1 over t squared, right? dt. Then your d theta is equal to uh, 2 dt 1 plus t squared. See? So you can have it you can have it easily now if you don't remember if you don't remember the conversion. Then the this is i then i is equal to integral then this is equal to 2 d theta 1 plus t square, okay, and then 1 plus 2t, 1 plus t square, right? And I converted the limit. When theta is 0, t is 0. When theta is half pi, this will be quarter pi. Ten your quarter pi is um, 1, right? Now then, 
uh, I multiply 1 plus t squared, right? Everywhere. So this is 2 dt. This is 1 plus t squared plus 2t. Okay. Then this is equal to 0 to 1. This is a 2. This is d theta. This is a perfect square, right? t plus 1 square. Then uh, this is equal to uh, 2 outside. 0 to 1. 1 plus t square, right? Plus 1. Sorry, sorry, sorry. T plus 1 square. And uh, I change this one. This is t. Ah, uh, excuse me. So, so many, so many, <laughs> so many careless, careless errors. Right? Hope you understand. And excuse me. And this is a, I change it to t plus 1. Okay. dt plus 1, dt, there's no difference. Okay, so this one is equal to 2 times negative 1 plus t plus 1, right? Yeah. Well, from uh, 0 to 1. So this is 2 bracket negative half plus 1 over 1, right? Wait a minute. This is this is a zero to one. Is a one is a two. Zero is a one over one. Yes. Okay. This is equal to one, right? Negative negative one and two. So the result is one. <coughs> the same result as the method one. Okay. Excuse me for some errors, but just careless mistakes. Okay, this is the method two. Then the method of three. Uh, method of three. We are doing this integral, right? D theta, one plus sine theta, zero to half prime. Now, method of three, I'm using this, right? Sine theta, is equal to 2i e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta, right? I hope you remember that, you know, I'm using complex numbers. So this integral becomes 0 to half pi, no change. This is 1 plus 2i e to the negative, uh, positive, positive i theta minus e to the negative i theta and uh, d theta. So far, so good. <clears throat> then I multiply, I multiply by 2i e to the i theta. I multiply the, the numerator and the denominator by this. Okay. This becomes 0 to half pi. This becomes, uh, this becomes uh, 2i e to the I theta, right? And uh, plus, I, I cancel this becomes e to the 2i theta minus minus 1, right? Okay, this is a 2i e to the i theta, d theta. 
Okay, this is the reason I multiply uh, multiply this because I get rid of the negative exponents, and also that I get rid of the denominator. Now, I think I think the thing is quite clear that we let we let the u be e to the i theta, right? Then du is equal to i e to the i theta d theta. So far so good. So far so good. Then this is equal to integral to half pi. This becomes a u square, right? u square and uh, plus 2i u minus 1. Okay, this is a 2u, right? Uh, this time, this time I'm careful. No mistake. Oh yeah, there's still uh, something. <laughs> This is, because this is theta, this is integrated with respect to theta. Now we are integrating with respect to u, so we have to confirm, the, uh, con we have to change the limit. Now when theta is zero, u is one, so this is one. Well, we're learning from mistakes, right? So, okay, now when theta is half pi, Uh, when theta is half pi, when theta is u is equal to e i half pi, this is equal to cosine half pi, right? Plus i sine half pi. So this is equal to i, right? This is zero. So this becomes i. So in other words, zero changes to one, half pi changes to i when you integrate with the to u. And this one is equal to from one to i. And uh, this is uh, two. What is this? This is u plus i square, right? u square plus 2i u plus i square. i square is a negative one. So this is a good, perfectly fit. And I'm up to, I change this one into u plus i. Because uh, du plus i is equal to du. There's no difference. But that gives me 2 negative, right, 1 over u plus i from 1 to i. Yeah, so far so good. Then this one is equal to 2 uh, negative i to i, right? Uh, I must be very careful because it's uh, very easy to have a mistake. This is one, one plus i. Okay, this is equal to two. And uh, if I'm out of an i, both, both top and the bottom, so you get, this will be i square, right? i square is a negative one. So let me write out, okay? This is a negative i, this is negative two, right? And uh, plus, this is one plus i times one minus i. One minus i. Okay, 
Here has to be very careful. This is two. <coughs> this is half i, right? And uh, plus this is a one square minus i square is two, right? One minus i. Yeah, that is equal to one. Very good. Well, I got it. So, three methods. You know, you get a three answer, which is the same. Now, let me summarize here, okay? Well, we, okay, we start from here, right? We are given <coughs> this integral. Now, the reason I'm doing this example by three methods, that I want to indicate the fact that uh, you may have a different methods to attack. Okay, you may just go ahead without any substitution. Well, it, it which method you are choosing is depends uh, the function, the integral function. What function given? It, it depends on the function, right? Uh, now I'm using a very simple example because uh, I can do three methods in, without two, without two taking too long time. Okay, what I want to say again, okay, if you are given something like a function getting involved with sine or cosine or trig functions, you may go directly integrate as as the trig functions or you may use the second method second method by by substitute t for tangent half theta and uh, from 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 which you change the integral function into algebraic function is in no more trick functions that is another method and the method of three is a bringing complex number you know use complex number <coughs> you still can do the integration you know right? now which method it depends the function given sometimes the one method is better than the other see you need experience to accumulate so this is what I want to say that when you deal with inter integral involving trig, trig functions, you have uh, different methods to attack. Okay, and which one is better depends on the function. Sometimes the one thing, one method is then then better than the other. Okay, thank you, thank you very much for your watching.